Hello, this is Kiwi from the Live Community bringing you a video on blocking unwanted proxy and VPN applications using Cortex XDR and adding some automation with Cortex XOR, presented by Brad Cochran. Brad gives an excellent demonstration of a very specific use case on which you can expand upon. Without further ado, I'll hand you off to Brad. Hello. My name is Brad Cochran, and I am a Cortex Systems Engineer with Palo Alto Networks. Today, I'm going to run through a quick demonstration using Cortex XDR to block an unwanted proxy application on the endpoint, then building upon that prevention, perform some automated response actions utilizing Cortex XOR and the next generation firewall. The way I've built my prevention is using a capability in Cortex XDR to create a custom behavioral indicator of compromise, and then turn that into a behavioral threat protection on the endpoint. So we can see that the, uh, the custom rule that I've created, use of known proxy VPN software, uh, I've settled on using the digital signature of the application as my enforcement point for this rule. You can see I do have other criteria that I could match on, such as executable name and path, However, I find that using the signature is a little bit more robust because it means that if a user was to try to rename the application or run it from an unexpected location, they could potentially circumvent such a prevention. I've then applied my custom BIOC rule to a prevention policy to turn it into a prevention action. So if I go to my endpoint where I have an XDR agent installed, I've got my undesirable application, in this case, Siphon. But before I run it, I'm actually going to rename it to something that I wouldn't expect to be blocked on the endpoint. So I'm going to call my application PowerShell.exe. However, even with that different name, whenever I go to run it, we will see I do still get a prevention. We see behavioral threat detected. And if I look at the details, we can see that it is my custom rule that I've created. So if that was as far as we went, we can see that you know, we are able to create custom prevention for you know, well-known or, or undesirable applications using a variety of different methods. Um, however, I'm taking this a step further and integrating this into Cortex XOR to perform some additional automated actions based on this prevention. So if I move over to my Cortex XOR console, we can see that we do have an integration with Cortex XDR. We can look at the integration and see that it is configured to fetch incidents. So as soon as this alert creates an incident in Cortex XDR, that's going to automatically pull that information into Cortex XOR where I can then extract additional information. I can enrich the, uh, the alerts with information from other sources. Um, and then I can perform my, my automated actions in the form of a custom playbook. When we look at the playbooks, we can see that I have created a playbook that I've associated with that integration called Cortex XDR VPN proxy detection. And we can look through kind of the, the, the basic playbook to gather information from the incident, check to see if there's a duplicate and automatically close it. There's some additional sub playbooks in, involved. In particular, we have a um, out of the box playbook called entity enrichment, which can take the different indicators that have been pulled out of that alert coming from XDR to perform additional enrichment. So we can do things like um, check the file hash against other sources, do the same thing for any IP addresses or URLs that may have been a part of that alert. Or in this example, use account enrichment to see if the username that was a part of that alert is belongs to Active Directory, we can automatically extract details such as their full name and email address, which we can utilize later on in the playbook. We can see that one of my other actions that I've created in a response section of the playbook is to automatically tag that host IP in the next generation firewall using an integration with the, the firewall. I've also created an email notification so that once 
this playbook runs, the student also gets an email letting them know that we've discovered their activity. If I look over on my firewall, I have a dynamic address group configured called proxy VPN hosts, which currently has no addresses in it. However, once that incident gets created and pushed into Cortex XOR, that playbook runs, it will automatically extract the IP address from that host machine and put it into this dynamic address group. One of the big benefits of using a dynamic address group for this feature is that you can tag IP addresses without requiring a commit. So we can immediately populate this address object on the firewall with our offending host. And then we can utilize this address object any number of ways through security policies. For example, we could put this, um, we could create a security policy on the firewall to heavily restrict what access that user has based on this dynamic address group. We could apply more stringent SSL decryption. We could enforce MFA through the use of an authentication policy. Again, depending on the type of application maybe that was detected or the type of threat coming in from XDR. There's a myriad of different use cases there. So at this point, I'm going to go back in to Cortex XOR. And we just need to wait for the incident to get created. Um, this can take a couple of minutes. So I'm probably going to pause the video so that we can pick it back up once the, uh, the incident has been created. Oh, and now it's already done. So now we have our new incident created in XOR. We can see that the incident number from XDR is incident 158. And if we go over into XDR and refresh our incidents page here, we also see that incident 158. If I go into my work plan, I can actually see the progress of the playbook as it goes through. We can see all of these sub playbooks have already run. We've done our tagging in the next gen firewall. We can see the output of that tag here. And if we go back over to the firewall, we can now confirm that there is an IP address in this dynamic address group. I've also completed the email student task. So if I go into my email, we can see the email that I've just received. You know, we personalize it using that information that we've enriched from that entity enrichment playbook. And in this case, I've just created kind of a generic email that says we've detected inappropriate use of VPN or proxy software and have temporarily restricted your network access and notified the information technology department. Further attempts may result in disciplinary action. Obviously, this is fully customizable, so you can make this say whatever you want or not have it send an email at all. Now, for demonstration purposes, I did put a manual task in my playbook that just pauses everything so that it gives me an opportunity to kind of walk through everything here. Um, obviously, this could be removed, but as I mark this task manually as completed, we see that the rest of the actions automatically complete. And not only is the incident within XOR closed, but if I go back into XDR and refresh my incidents, we see that that incident in XDR has also been resolved. Since we prevented the, uh, the undesirable application from running and we automatically kicked off some automations, there's nothing left for any kind of analyst to, to look at or do. So there's no reason for the incident to remain open. Automatically closes so that the analysts can focus on the incidents that do require some type of, of response action. So this concludes the demonstration. In summary, we were not only able to prevent the unwanted proxy application, but we were able to automatically restrict the end user's access via the firewall and notify them as well. While this may be a very specific use case, you can see how the same concepts could extend to a myriad of other use cases. Having an agent on the endpoint affords us a level of visibility that the firewall alone can't match. And some of the concepts used in this demonstration could potentially be used to help extend a zero trust architecture to beyond just the network. Thank you and have a wonderful day.
Thank you, Brad, for that excellent demonstration. As always, we welcome all questions and comments below. If you enjoyed watching this video, then please hit that like button and subscribe to be notified of all the new videos coming from the live community. Thanks again and have a great day.